Hey, what's up, Philip here. Today, we're gonna be checking out Logitech's G-Hub software. In this video, we're gonna be configuring the Logitech G815 keyboard. This video will work for devices like the G815 keyboard, which is the wired version, and pretty much any of Logitech's latest G products. In order to configure these devices, we're going to have to install the Logitech G-Hub software. Once you have the software installed, whether it's on Windows or Mac, it's going to look something like this. And it doesn't matter which one you're on, whether it's Windows or Mac, the software will function and run the same. The first thing you're going to notice is the device you have connected. I am using the Logitech G915 for this video demonstration, but if you have the Logitech G815, you can follow along as well. And if you have any of the latest Logitech G devices, this should be a fairly similar process. Down here, you can see the battery life of the device. And if you scroll down here, you can create an account and have all of your settings for your profiles saved in the cloud. That way, if you switch to a new device or computer, you'll have all of your settings ready to go. And on the top right over here, we have the Logitech settings. These are some global settings for your keyboard. Always start after logging in. I'd recommend keeping this checked. Turn off lighting after user and activity. Basically, this will help you save batteries if you're on a wireless device. Allow gaming and applications to control illumination. So basically, you can mirror your keyboard lights to glow similar to what's happening on your screen. Pretty cool effect there. And these settings here aren't too important for what we'll be doing in this video. Next, we're going to cover some of the settings on the keyboard. So if you click on your device, you're gonna get zoomed into the keyboard and you're gonna see more settings that you can play with. So a quick rundown on where everything is. These are your lightings effects on the keyboard. These are your assignments to the keys on the left-hand side of the keyboard. And this is game mode. So basically what game mode is, is when you toggle this button at the top of the keyboard, you disable these keys while you're in a game. So let's say you don't want all of these keys right here to work while you're in a game. You can have that selected and these keys won't work only when this button is on. If you turn this off, these keys will begin to work again. So it's a fairly simple um, feature. I personally didn't feel like I had to mess with this. I think just the Windows keys being disabled is good enough for me. But if you want the Windows keys to work in your game, all you gotta do is turn this button off and it's gonna work. All right, next we're gonna go into the lighting settings. So three tabs here, you get presets with preset lighting effects here, you get freestyle and you get animations. So let's run through them real quick. Presets are presets that Logitech already created for us and we can just select whatever lighting effects we like. You have things like a fixed light where it's one color, you have it, you can have it cycle through and there's a few other cool ones here. I thought the echo press feature was quite cool. Basically when you run your fingers through the keyboard, push a few buttons, they fade out slowly. I thought that was pretty cool. And you can mess around with some of these to see which ones you like. And you can configure the background colors, the echo colors, and a bunch of different things on these presets. All right, freestyle lighting is a option where you can configure the color of specific parts of the keyboard. So I'm gonna make a new profile here so I don't mess with it. I made one earlier called USA, but we'll do it again. We'll call it US. All right, so I'm gonna make my keyboard red, white, and blue, and I can choose which parts of the keyboard glow which color. So let's say I want this logo to be red. So the first thing I'm gonna do is select my brush, click red, and then click on the logo. As you can see, it turned red. Now let's say I want my numbers to also be red. So I'm gonna have red already selected, click the numbers and boom, the numbers are red. And then let's say I want my keys to be white. So I'm gonna select the keys here, drag it over to white and you can see the rest of the keyboard is white. Let's add a little bit of blue in here. So we're gonna click the blue key. Let's make our F keys blue, the G modifiers, maybe the WASD keys. 
and I guess let's make the modifiers red to add more variety. But yeah, as you can see, we made a red, white, and blue keyboard. Pretty cool stuff if you want to, I guess, make a very customized keyboard. And next is the animations tab over here. So with the animations, you have a few preset animations that Logitech gives you. You have this ocean effect where it looks like it's the beach and a wave is kind of overflowing on it. And there's a few other presets here. If you want to build your own custom animation, you would have to go to new animation. And this part is fairly complicated, so we won't get deep into it, but really quick. Here's the play button and you can select what glows where. So let's say you want to add a five step animation. You click the plus button a few times. One, two, three, four, five. You select this one. I want this one to be wavy. I want this one to be like this, this one like that. And these are just transition styles. So if we click play, we can see it glows kind of randomly. So if you want to create a really custom animation, you have the option to do that here with speed adjusters, color adjusters for every step. But we won't get too deep into that in this video. All right, next we're going to go to the assignment keys. And this is where you configure these keys on the left hand side of the keyboard. So the first thing you have is commands, and these are some basic device shortcuts. So for Mac, we have these Mac specific keys. Windows, you're gonna have different ones, but let's do an example here. So if you want to say, let's see, make a full screen hockey, we just drag this hockey over. Let's say we want it to the top one here, and now it's set as full screen. So if we actually push the uh, full screen hockey button here on our keyboard. Let's do that now. You can see it expands to full screen. And if we click it again, it goes back to windowed mode. And there's a bunch of settings you can play with here like copy paste, screenshots, navigations, and some productivity hotkeys. Over here we have keys. You can assign specific keys to the Logitech Macro G keys here. So for example, let's say we wanted um, the delete to be this button. So whenever we push this bottom button now, it's gonna push and delete. That way you don't have to use this one for whatever reason you may need to use it. Or maybe if you're like playing a game and you wanna open up like a map menu, maybe you can drag like the map pop key, like the letter M into here. And then, you know, that'll open your map instead of letter M. It's all customizable based on your preference. And down here, you can switch the different profiles where you assign hotkeys. So on M1, which is this button here, you're going to have these specific shortcuts. If you switch to profile two, you're going to have a new set of shortcuts. And you have three shortcuts, which makes that 15 total customizable hotkeys. All right, and the G shift is a different option. This you need two Logitech devices for. We won't get into that in this video. Um, actions are specific applications with certain settings. So with Discord, you can do things like mute yourself. With OBS, you can toggle desktop mute, start your stream, start recording, mute your mic, and a few other settings. All right, now let's jump into the macros. The macros are pretty cool. So basically you can create a really custom hotkey shortcut to work with these. So let's create a clicker macro. So if we say clicker, we're gonna create, that's the name of our macro. We're gonna oh, call this clicker, okay. And then here's how the macro runs. You can make it where you push it and it runs once. You can make it repeat itself while you're holding the button or you can toggle it like an on and off switch. So once it's on, it keeps repeating this macro. And you can also do a sequence. The sequence is quite interesting as well. You can have the macro fire off when you press the button, when you're holding it, or rather while you're holding it, and on release. Pretty cool stuff here. All right, but in our case, we're just gonna do the one time, actually we'll do holding. So let's just do hold. So we're gonna create a new macro and you can do things like write some text out. You can have a few other settings here, but let's record one. So we're gonna say like click, and then we're gonna stop recording. And now we're gonna save that and we're gonna assign this macro to the bottom key here. 
So let's test this out. So I have this click counter here and I just wanna show you how this works if you wanna build like a little clicker. So if I click on this with my mouse, you can see that it works. But the issue with this is that I have to click a lot and my finger is gonna get tired. But with the macro, if I push it, it works as well. If I hold it, you can see it goes much quicker and I'm not clicking my mouse. And if I let go of the key, it stops. So I think that's pretty cool if you need to have some sort of clicker. The possibilities are endless with the macro. So whatever you can think of, you can make a macro for that and have your keyboard pull off whatever functionality you want. You can do things like add delay timers right here. Let's say you want it to click every, you know, five seconds, like uh, right here. So 5,000 milliseconds. So that's five seconds. It says click, wait five seconds, and then maybe record, click again. So this is pretty cool stuff. Here we see that we push, the mouse clicks down, and then let's go, and then waits five seconds, pushes down, then let's go. Let's test it out. Let's see if this macro actually works. So here I'm clicking with my mouse, it works, and if I push the key, one, two, three, four, five, and there you go, it worked. Pretty cool stuff. So this thing is really customizable. You can do things like type, say like, hello, you know, and then you can delete stuff. You can add delay timers and you can reorder things based on where you want what to happen. You have a lot of options with what you want to do. You can open specific applications. You could do things like uh, edit your media controls or whatever. There's a lot of settings in here. This has been an overview on how the Logitech G Hub software works. Again, this will work with most newer Logitech devices like the G915 or the G815 or pretty much any new mouse that Logitech releases. So whatever you do on the keyboard, you can probably do it on the mouse as well. If you wanna know what's happening in the tech world, click that subscribe button and hit the bell for notifications. Don't forget to like and leave a comment down below. Peace.